Hi, I'm Sonny Scott. And I'm Brandy Borg. This is your special edition SBC News for June 15, 2008. In today's headlines, we will hit the events of every household in the Windfall community, from summer vacations to a birthday party that's trying to make a difference for a traumatized family. We'll also have your Cherry Festival highlights as well as your in-depth Mission County interview. But first, our breaking news. Now as everyone knows, Chuck has been diagnosed with bone cancer and concurrent acute kidney failure. Luckily his kidneys can be repaired once the bone cancer treatment is underway, but he is currently still waiting for the insurance company to, uh, to approve his treatment. In our other headlines, there's a party to make a difference. Mason and Kel Farnsworth decided to use their birthday party to think of others in need rather than just themselves. They asked their friends not to bring a present, but instead donate a few dollars to a collection they were doing for the Coburn family, where the family lost their dad, two sisters, and have one sister still in the hospital. They've collected about $175 and still counting, as it has inspired other family members to add to the pot. Also, Kel and a few of his cousins raised about 100 m more by having cookie and punch sale at Valley Pump last Friday morning, June 13th. We are all very proud of them. Now we'll go to Brandy out in the field, in the heart of the Cherry Festival at the Emmett City Park. Thanks, Sonny. I'm here at Emmett 74th Annual Cherry Festival. We waited all year to enjoy the cherry pit spinning and world hiding contest. For the show, fun run, and most of all, carnival. The festival also includes a big parade, coin scrambler, entertainment, bands, fiddlers, food, Expo and Car Show. The festival started June 11th and the last day was June 14th. The theme of this year's Cherry Festival is Hometown Heroes, which was selected by the organizers. The theme is to be used in the parade and also throughout the events. The theme celebrates everyday people such as moms, dads, teachers, grandparents, and their friends that made a positive influence in their lives. The festival started with Emmett's Miss Jim County pageant, where four lovely and talented women, Kylie Gannon, Sarah Downs, Jocelyn Geringer, and Larissa Poe competed for the title of Miss Jim County. Shortly, we will be going back to the studio, where Sonny will be interviewing Miss Jim County of 2008. But first, here's your in-depth exclusive Cherry Festival highlights. I'm Brandy Bork, SBC News. Brandy, it sounds kind of loud out there. It must be pretty busy. Well, first, all of us can say that the carnival and its food was another success this year. There were performances by many local and out-of-town musicians. There are many activities held for young ones in the family, including a cherry berry tea party with Miss Jim County, pinata events, and a whole cherry zone where being the cherry was always hanging out along with Miss Jim County. For the older carnival goers, there were rides, games, cherry pie eating contests, a 5K fun run, and many other events. We can't wait to see what's in store for our community next year. In other news, the Scots say their pool is open for the summer season and invite everyone to stop in and take a dip. I know I will. Also, have you been seeing those pink flamingos everywhere in town? Well, the flamingo migration season is upon us. The Synergy Realty Relay for Life team was started to spread the You've Been Flocked Flamingos. They started at the City Hall with the mayor and will travel to different locations in Emmett to help promote a fundraiser held August 22nd for the Cancer Prevention, Prevention Society. Now we'll go to Sunny with the exclusive interview with Miss Jim County. Sunny? Thanks, Brady. I'm here with Miss Jim County 2008 Sarah Downs. Sarah was crowned Monday, June 9th at the Miss Jim County pageant. Sarah, what is your platform? My platform is making a difference through mentoring. How might you approach this being a mentor? You have to have a willingness to be with young children. In your own words, why do you think mentoring is important? Mentoring is important because there are a lot of kids in Jim County who don't have a positive role model, and having a mentor really helps them do well in school and then later in life too. And why do you think mentoring should be needed? Mentoring is needed because a lot of kids in Jim County don't have the best role models. Um, I know some parents do a great job, but then some other kids aren't as fortunate, so they need other um, mentors in the community to help them. What do you think the biggest challenge in mentoring is going to be? I think getting enough mentors involved is going to be our biggest challenge. Uh, should you, uh, what should the community do to help the mentoring program? To help that with the mentoring program, to volunteer as mentors, and also to get their children involved in the mentoring programs would help a lot. And where will you be going to college next fall? I'll be going to college at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Okay. How was your previous running in Miss Jim County in your junior year prepared you for this year's? I think just knowing what's going to happen 
this year it wasn't as big of a surprise, the interview and things like that, so that really helped me be more calm. Were you more nervous in this year's or last year's? I think I was more nervous in both equally because even though I ran last year and I know what's going on, it still makes yeah. me nervous to run against the other girls. In what ways will you think Mischim County will help you? Well, I've improved interview skills through Mischim County and also just having confidence to go on stage in your bathing suit <laughs> really helps. <laughs> okay. What did you do to prepare for Miss Jen? To prepare, um, the girls practiced. We all practiced together for two weeks. But previous to that, I've been playing my talent, um, practicing my song, and shopping for evening wear and stuff, and then also selling advertisements for the scholarship money. If your friend was running for Miss Jim County next year, what kind of advice would you give them? I would tell her to prepare her talent in advance really far ahead, just so she's ready, and also to practice interviewing, because that's the, a really big part yeah. of Miss Jim. What made you enter the Michigan County pageant for the first time? When I was little, I was the Junior Miss Cherry Festival Queen, and I got to see Miss Jim County on stage, and I really wanted to be Miss Jim County and to be a role model. Who helped you through Michigan County? My hostess, Diane Savage, um, also the Jim County Board, and my family helped me a lot. What made you play the violin in this year's pageant? I've been playing violin for eight years, so that's my strongest talent, so that's what I chose to play. What is the one thing that you have learned about yourself in competing in Mischim County? I discovered that I'm actually quite shy, but doing Mischim County has helped me not be so shy on stage and in front of people. Do you think participating in Mischim teaches determination and responsibility? I do. You have to be determined when you're running for Mischim County. It's a hard job, and you have to be responsible to get have all your things ready and to be at all the practices. Why did you want to win the title of Mischim County? I think just representing Jim County is an honor, and being able to promote my platform in the community is really why I wanted to run. While representing Jim County to other individuals, how would you describe us? Jim County, small, small town, close-knit, um, everyone helps everyone out, and really friendly community, which is really great. What do you like most about your community? I like how everyone's close. Even like with the Mayor's Youth Action Council, I can sit with the Mayor and just talk. And I know in a lot of other cities, kids don't get the chance to do that. What would you do to improve the community's image? I know a lot of people from out of town think we're all hicks, <laughs> <laughs> farmers and things like that, and I know we have a lot of intelligent people here, so I just think getting the word out that Jim County isn't all about, yeah. all about that. And are you going to be looking forward to compete in Miss Idaho? Yes, I'm really excited. That's next summer. Right after um, next year's Miss Jim County pageant will be Miss Idaho, so I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Okay, there you have it, your Mischim County 2008 Sarah Downs. We all wish her good luck in representing Jim County. Back to you, Brandy. I'm Sunny Scott, SBC News. Four girls competed for the spot this year. Jocelyn Geringer, third runner-up. Kylie Gannon, second runner-up. Larissa Coe, first runner-up. And Sarah Downs, who took the crown. Also mark your calendars for a free education forum on West Nile virus and mosquito control. They will answer questions on West Nile virus and what Jim County is doing to control mosquitoes. That will take place on June 26, 2008 at the Emmett Junior High Auditorium. Now here's a look at your neighborhood household update. JT, Trevor, and Keegan Farnsworth are all getting ready for football, and the Farnsworth family of 3010 say they are excited for camping this summer. Trevor and Keegan got new motorcycles and are ready to ride them. Also coming soon to 3010 Windfall Circle, grass in the backyard and granite in the kitchen. In Caswell's news, they say their cruise was wonderful. It was nice to be in a warm spot for a while. They left from Tampa, Florida and visited Grand Cayman Islands, Cosmel, Belize, and Rotan. Their grandsons Tyler and Troy Whitson from Ben were visiting for spring break and kept Grandma busy. Bill and Linda Wars are going to Colorado this summer to visit their son and daughter-in-law, Kurt. Their son was promoted to captain commander of his medical unit. He may soon be deployed to Afghanistan or Iraq. Bill and son-in-law Steve went bear hunting, but the only bear they saw named Boo Boo. As he was quite small, they had a great time though, and left Boo Boo to grow up. Jaden Wilkerson tore her ACL, a ligament in her knee, and had surgery on April 10th. Sage is playing Little League Baseball. The twins are playing soccer, leaving the Wilkerson family at the island for the most of their spare time. Many neighbors remember Chuck's mom when she used to visit and took her daily walk around the neighborhood. Anne passed away from cancer on May 7th, just two months short of her 94th birthday. Dick and Donna Jennings are glad the golf season started back in April, and they will be playing in most of the senior golf tournaments this year. They had a nice golfing trip this winter to the Prim Valley Resort near Las Vegas and to the Mesquite Super Bowl golf tournament. 
They have found a trailer for their new truck they bought last December, but are now looking for a new Harley. They just may be looking for another airplane to replace the one Dick wrecked last July as well. They are thankful for all the Lord's blessings. Doug Severance escaped our awful winter by spending three weeks in the Buenos Aires, Argentina, helping a missionary construction work project. Almost 400 helped construct a convection center in Pilar, Argentina. They went to Zion National Park, Bryce Canyon, and Arches National Park in the middle of May and say, what a variety and beauty we saw. Jordan and Jason Mackey had expected and leave and were able to come home for the first time since Christmas. Jordan is a U.S. Marine stationed at the Camp Pendleton near San Diego, California. Jason is a U.S. Armed Soldier stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Jamie Scott Mackey is performing in the musical Chicago that is playing at the Nam Pacific Center till the end of June. Charlie and Linda are new retired from the Emmett School District. They are looking forward to travel and being with their three grandsons. We would also like to give a special thanks to Nate Lowe for keeping snow off our neighborhood sidewalks in the winter. And now for the all-time topic, gas prices. As prices for regular gasoline nudge the $4 a gallon mark, those who drive diesel-powered vehicles already know the crunch. They've probably been paying over $4 a gallon since April. That is nearly double the cost per gallon for regular gasoline than just over three years ago. In Emmett, choices are few, especially for those who travel to Ada or Canyon County for work. Van rides are booked solid with waiting lists. Kirk Montgomery from Ada County Highway District said, Others affected by the increased gasoline prices are those who leave the county for medical or doctor appointments. YCAP does supply gasoline vouchers for medical reasons, Cindy Egan from Western Idaho Community Action Program in Emmett said. However, the voucher is a one-time program through the Salvation Army that was recently raised $20. Quote, I've had to turn people down even for medical reasons, Egan said. They can't even get to free services if they don't have enough money to put gas in the tank, end quote. The Idaho State Police also have to make cuts, resituate cop posts, and move more officers to pedal bikes. The gas prices are affecting all of us. Now we would like to give a happy birthday to Mason, May 13th, JT, May 23rd, and Dick, July 31st, and a happy anniversary to Jim and Susan, June 12th as well. Well, before we finally end our last newscast, we would like to say goodbye and thank you from our studio to your home. Things are changing, it seems strange, and I need to figure this out. You've got to see when they're hunting, but they only there, they saw, they didn't do As he's quite small, they had a great time, though, and let Boo Boo grow up. Jay Wilkerson for her ACL ligament in the knee. Wait, whatever he's not doing. He said ligament. He said Bill and Linda son-in-law. It's just Bill and son-in-law. Look at him. Look at him. He's like ligament. Two, one. And here's a look at your neighborhood household update. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone.